Um, when did you come to Spain? In 90, 1990, or, yeah, 1990 then, came to Spain. Why? Why? Uh, um, <laughs> you well, came on holiday and then you just stayed? No, no, I'd finished university and I was actually engaged. When I came out of university I was engaged and my then fiancé was doing a master's in Russia for a year. Okay. So he went off to Russia and I didn't want to go to Russia so I thought okay he's in Russia for a year so I'll spend a year abroad. So it was like a year off? It was a year off, yeah, and it was only supposed to be a year. And it wasn't in the end. And you stayed. <laughs> and I stayed. And yes. did you come, when you came to Spain, did you come straight to Yeah, Valencia? because I just didn't know, I didn't even know where Valencia was. I mean, I just kind of, someone said, oh, there's work in Valencia. And I was like, okay, get a map. <laughs> I knew where Barcelona was. And I had no idea about Valencia. So you've never lived anywhere else in Spain? No, I've always, that's really boring, but I've always lived in Valencia. No, 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 not at all. Well, same, lived... same here. Yeah? yeah? I've came here and I've been here ever since. Yeah, yeah. So what did you study at university? Um, politics and economic history. And how did that evolve into English? <laughs> it thinking? evolved because I wanted to do something for a year and I needed to earn my way for a year. So when I finished university, I, was, I went to university at Canterbury, so I went to Pilgrims and right. did a month's CELTA course, CELTA teaching course. course, straight. When I finished, I just stayed on at university for an extra month and did the CELTA course. Uh, because I knew I, I was, if I wanted to spend a year away, I had to obviously earn. But it wasn't my long-term plan at that time. Of course. It was just a stopgap. Where were you born? London. <coughs> South London. Which part? Uh, near New Cross. Mm. Very just near where Jonathan Page lived. Over the river? Lived. Yeah. Okay. And what was your, did you grow up there? What was your childhood? No, I, grew, I only stayed there till I was six or seven and then my parents moved to the south coast near, near Portsmouth but along the coast a bit more from Portsmouth. So that's where you really sort of grew up and went yeah, to school? Yeah, it's where I grew up and went to school, yeah. Was yeah. it nice growing up there? It was all right, yeah. I, 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 yeah, it was okay. I, I didn't, the school, yeah, I, I kind of found it all a bit small really. Mm -hmm. um, I always wanted to like spread my wings and go to London yeah go back to London I used to go to London a lot because all my family was there so I was always in London and I missed London and when I went to university I was every weekend I was in London mm -hmm. um, what's been the most difficult thing for you about making a life here in Spain um, well probably getting really good Spanish friends I would say um, I think same here I think it's very easy to know a lot of Spanish people, but to find really close friends mm -hmm. who are Spanish uh, is quite difficult. I find that. Why do you think that is? I, find I just that think so. it's not that we can't speak Spanish. No, I just think there's a huge, huge, especially with, well, I don't know so much with men, but I just find there's such a huge cultural gap. Most of my close non-English friends are non-Spanish. They're Argentinian or they're Brazilian. But they've all got that, we've all got that same kind of background of living in a country that's not your own. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of gives you more in common. Have you, it sounds like you've always been a teacher as soon as you started working, no. you went straight into teaching. Have you done any other jobs? <laughs> I've done lots of other jobs. Some of them I will not reveal. Um, <laughs> but I, before I actually went to, I, I took a year off before going to university as well because I wasn't sure that I wanted to go to university. And I actually started work, this is awful, training as a tax inspector. Really? For one year, and then I hated it so much. Why did you choose that? Because I, I finished my A-levels and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I wasn't sure I wanted to go to university because no one else in my family had gone to university before. Um, so I thought, okay, I'll work. I got into the civil service as a tax, trainee tax inspector. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for 10 months before I decided I hated it and left and went to university. I think that was probably a good choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jackie, what's the best thing about being a teacher? Um, colleagues and being in a classroom and the relationship with the students, definitely. What's the worst? Correcting people's homework. <laughs> Marking. <laughs> Marking. Marking. And, and unsociable hours, but I don't work unsociable hours anymore. But I think mm. the worst thing, if you have a family and have a partner with a normal life is unsociable hours, teaching yeah, hours. Absolutely. Most people want to study 
Saturday mornings, yeah, late at or night, nine after at work. Night. It's yeah. okay for a few years, but when you've been doing it for 20 years, then it's just like no way. Yeah. If you weren't a teacher, is there a profession that you'd like to try? Um, now I would be a chef, definitely. With your own restaurant? With a, my, uh, a deli type rest place is what I'd like to I have. I think we spoke about this. Yeah, I would definitely do that. What kind of food would you serve? I would do kind of um, Moroccan mix, Indonesian mix type. Fusion. Fusion oh. food and obviously cakes. Mm. What advice would you give Spanish speakers who are trying to learn English? Uh, listen and immerse yourself in English as much as possible because now there's so many opportunities and I think the biggest problem for Spanish speakers has always been that they don't, they're not exposed enough to, to the language. And how can they expose well, themselves? Well now they have internet, you have, um, you have reading resources, you have, you have, I mean the, even the television is dual, you know, there's no excuse really now not to uh, are there any, because I know you're quite interested in technology, are there any specific applications that you'd recommend English learners to use? I mean, I, I generally teach higher level learners, but um, two, two apps that I swear by for higher levels. One is TED Talks. TED Talks. The... TED Talks is brilliant, and you have the tape scripts, which you can, you can bring down and listen to, and they're excellent for higher level because for connected speech, for presentations, brilliant. And also what I like about TED Talks is that the it's students could, well, they could choose the area they're yeah. interested in because yeah. there are talks on pretty much everything. And also it gives them ideas because very often high level students lack ideas and it gives them the ideas. And another one which I've just started using, which a student recommended to me, is British Radio. It's an app you can download for free and it has Radio 1, 2, 3, 4, Capital, mm -hmm. KISS, um, gold, all live streaming, and I, I'm just listening to Radio 4 non stop, and it's brilliant. Is, is that on iOS and Android, or, or is it restricted? I've just downloaded it on Apple, so I'm okay. not sure if it's on Android, but I suppose. I suppose it is, or I suppose you can get it through a computer as well, but it's absolutely brilliant. And someone mentioned last week TuneIn that also has the British, that's also free and it yeah. also has the, the stations, uh, yeah, some of that, British but, stations. Yeah, but it's really good, and I think Radio 4, for, again, for listening, is excellent because of a variety of accents, variety mm -hmm. of topics, and it's all speaking. It's, it's a brilliant And station. you mentioned to me a few days ago an app called Quizlet. Yes. Can you explain well, what that is? That came from another teacher that wasn't, I didn't find it. It's, a, it's an app which, where you can share, um, it's a vo creating vocabulary kind of definitions, dictionary definitions, and you can, you, can, you can have a closed group or you can have open groups, so you can basically um, put your students into a group, which is password protected, and every week you can upload new words and they can, they can play games with it and it's, on, it's mobile so they can do it while they're in the car. Or so it's for tube. learning vocabulary mainly? So, yeah, so far what I've seen it's vocabulary based. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It's like a pelmanism but on your mobile phone. Great, so there's no excuse for not learning no on your own, in your own free time. No no. And speaking of free time, in your free time um, when you're not working, what do you have time? any hobbies apart from cooking? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, walking my dog, which takes up a huge amount of my time. Was that twice a day? He needs to go out about two hours a day because he's huge really? and young. Yes, he's only a year old and he's very big and very boisterous. Uh -huh. uh, so that takes up a lot of my time. Reading, walking, doing pilates and mm -hmm. being a taxi driver for my children. <laughs> That's basically my free time. Then all your time's gone. You? And then I have no more free time. Could you talk a bit about what you hope to do in the future? Retire. You're thinking of that already? You've got years to go, Jackie. I know, Jackie. I know. How could you be thinking about that now? Because oh, I'd love to retire and open a little delicatessen somewhere. Um, what I'd like to do in the future, basically continue as I am, because I, um, because I do a lot of exams work and a lot of assessment work, move, maybe move even more into that area, uh, which I can do from home, because I can work online. Um, I still like teaching, but... You know, 12 hours a week is enough for me in the class now. OK, Jackie, we're now moving into the quick-fire hot seat oh, part of the interview. Okay. The quick-fire hot seat. So I'm going to fire some <laughs> questions at you and tell me what you think. Right. What makes you happy? Uh, a, a sunny day in winter sitting on a terrace with a, with a cold beer. And a glass of, or a glass of or wine. Or a glass of wine. <laughs> what yeah. makes you sad? Um, the news in general. 
I don't watch the news. <laughs> Me neither. What one thing, if you were to tell someone about yourself, would they find it difficult to believe? Or would they find it difficult to believe? Okay, when I was at university, I used to model hair model for Vida Sassoon, who's a very, very famous London hairdresser. Wait, wait, you used to model hair, hair model. products? Yeah, no, no, hair products. I used to go on stage and used to cut your hair and then they used to have to walk up and down and have shows, hairdressing he shows. He was really big, I don't know if he he's, still is, but he was really he's big. He's really Vidal big, Sassoon. he's huge, he's, he's huge, yeah. So I did that. As so a, you met him? I didn't meet him, no, because I think when I was doing it, he was probably like in his 60s, it's, it was his shops. Okay. So I used to do that. So you'd have blue hair, green hair. I had no no control over my hair for three years. Was it well paid, or did you just? It was do okay it for... paid. It was quite well paid, yeah, and it was easy. You just yeah. had strange looking hair occasionally. <laughs> and they cut it free. Uh, for, yeah, well, <laughs> yes, they did cut it free, but it was strange. <laughs> which which famous person, dead or alive, would you like to have dinner with? Okay, well, to say the obvious, it would have to be George Clooney, um, for obvious reasons. But if, if I was being more serious, I would actually quite like to have dinner with Lenin. Why? Well, because I, I studied politics, I was really into politics, and um, I just think he's a really fascinating person, but before the October Revolution. What would you ask him? Uh, if he had any idea of what, what was actually going to happen as a result of his actions. <laughs> And if things turned out how they wanted, uh, how he, how he wanted them to. In an ideal world, what would your life be like? I think uh, I know the answer to this already. Less stressful. <laughs> less work. Less open work, a deli. Open a deli. Retire early. Retire early. Have a nice, nice beach apartment somewhere so I can have my glass of wine looking out the sea views. Are you a great traveller? I love travelling. Yes. I love travelling, and that's one thing I would like to do more of in the future. Is there any way in particular that you haven't been yet that you'd like to, yeah. to go? Uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and all that area mm -hmm. I haven't been to, so I'd love to go there. Okay. If you could change something about your character, what would you change? I'd like to be more patient, because I tend to go off quite easily sometimes. Okay. Think before I speak. What's your biggest guilty pleasure? Oh, do you know I haven't got many anymore? Um, I don't have time <laughs> for guilty right. pleasures. Um, um, I don't really know. I, I don't know. I don't think I've got a guilty pleasure. I mean, chocolate, but even chocolate I don't eat very much anymore. Mm -hmm. um, that's, really, that's really sad. I don't no, think it's I've, not. I don't I think, think I've got any guilty pleasures. If I have a pleasure, I'm not guilty about it, to tell you the truth. You I think I've got it, to my, yeah. an age where I don't have to feel guilty about it doing things right. that I like. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> and finally, if you, if you had €6,000 to spend on yourself, mm -hmm. what would you buy? I wouldn't buy anything. I would treat myself to three or four days in a five-star luxury hotel with a spa treatment and three or nice four, food. Sorry, three or th four days. In a spa, in a health spa? No, no, health spa, no. Just luxury massage, beauty spa, health spa, no. Okay. Uh, that's what I would do. Would Three or four cost, days. Would it cost that much? Yes, easily. Really? Yeah, yeah. If it's one of the ones that I, I'd like to go to, yes. Jackie, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I, I kind of found it all a bit small, really. Mm -hmm. um, I always wanted to, like, spread my wings. Go to London. I wouldn't buy anything, I would treat myself to three or four days.
Well, because I, I studied politics, I was really into politics and um, 